Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome to GH Talks Justice Studies. So my name is Caitlin Billenduke. I am the Liaison Events Coordinator here in Student Recruitment at the University of Guelph Humber. It's my pleasure to be your host over the next hour for today's program. We have such an exciting evening ahead talking all things justice. I hope you all are excited as we are. Now, before I introduce my other colleagues today, I just wanted to go through a few housekeeping items before we begin of how tonight's program is gonna go. So you'll notice that we are taking a little bit of a break from our chat feature this evening. With that said, um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to submit these at any time using the Q&A feature on the toolbar. So you'll either be addressed privately or your question will be covered live at the end of the event. And we will indicate that through the Q&A feature. Now we may also post some additional resources that supplement the information today. Um, that will be posted to the chat. So feel free to check those out as the program goes on this evening. Now we ask you keep uh, questions tonight specific to the Justice Studies program. All other upcoming program webinar dates can be found on our GH Talks website. If you ever need to circle back on any of the great information you're gonna hear tonight, a recording will be available on our website at a later date. So uh, please feel free to check that out at a later date. Without further ado, I'm pleased to produce our first presenter, and that's my colleague, Joseph Italiano, who will take you through who we are as a university, as well as the program, including first year courses, unique opportunities, and much more. Welcome, Joseph. Thank you, Katie, and hello to all of our future students this evening. I want to begin today's presentation by giving a big shout out to all of you, as uh, we know that navigating through this pandemic can be challenging for many students as you transitioned to quad masters or octomesters to online learning or perhaps a hybrid of both online and in person. And now, as we recently heard, uh, back to an online model. So by joining us here today, it likely means that you've already taken another step in your search for a post-secondary institution, and you likely already submitted your application to the University of Guelph Humber, more specifically, perhaps the Justice Studies program. And if you haven't already applied, the good news is there is still time to do so as we are currently still accepting applications for the Justice Studies program. Now, if we moved on to the next slide, I wanna also begin by letting you know of a recent stat that Statistics Canada released. So recently Statistics Canada released a survey results that showed that 14% of recent college graduates first began their studies by completing a university degree. Now they chose to obtain their diploma at a college after attending university because they wanted to gain more specialized hands-on training through the college diploma that was related to their undergraduate degree. Now, the good news for you is that at the University of Guelph Humber, we are the collaboration between two renowned institutions. You have the University of Guelph and Humber College Institute of Technology and Advanced Learning. Now, our graduates receive both a degree that provides them with the theoretical knowledge and a diploma that provides them with hands-on practical learning in all four years of full-time study at our one location in Toronto, saving you more time and money. Now, if you're wondering how this is achieved, how do you earn a degree and a diploma in four years of full-time study? Well, at the University of Guelph Humber, our curriculum is more focused. This means that our programs consist of a majority of core courses with a maximum of only five electives per program. And this means that you'll be studying what you're truly passionate about starting at your very first day at our campus. Now at the University of Guelph Humber, we also offer you more practical experiences. And this is found through our field placements. So each of our seven focus programs have workplace experience built right into the curriculum. So depending on what program you ultimately choose, you may be required to complete anywhere from 100 or all the way up to 850 hours of in-field experience. And being located in Canada's largest city, Toronto, places you in the center of all opportunities. 
And at the University of Guelph Humber, we have built many networks and connections with major organizations and companies uh, within our very own community, making it easy for you to secure those placements. Now our instructors also bring more knowledge and experience to the classroom as they are easily able to connect real life experiences to those theoretical concepts being taught to you within the classroom. And this is made possible as many of them are still working or have worked for a number of years within the related area of study. Now the University of Guelph Humber off also offers you a more close knit community which provides you with more opportunities to create those industry connections. Now, by attending the University of Guelph Humber, you will experience the unique opportunity of small campus and classroom size. With a total student population of just under 5,000 students, you are placed in an academic learning environment where close bonds and friendships are inevitable. Your average class size is only 49 students, with your largest lecture hall being a maximum of 125 students. A close-knit community ensures that you'll be on a first-name basis with, with your instructors, providing you with that advantage of gaining personalized reference letters and one-on-one -on -one supports within the classroom. Now, moving forward to the next slide. As a Justice Studies graduate, upon four years of full-time study, when you cross that stage on graduation day, you'll be, you'll be receiving two credentials. You will earn an Honors Bachelor's of Applied Science and Justice Studies from the University of Guelph and a diploma in either Community and Justice Services or Police Foundations. Now, gaining two credentials is what makes us at the University of Guelph Humber unique, but it is also what will make you stand out to employers. But by earning both credentials, this will tell employers that you not only have the knowledge of the field, but also the hands-on experience to do the job successfully. Now, we'll take a look at the next slide, please. Now, the Justice Studies program is the only program at the University of Guelph Humber that allows you to choose which diploma you would like to obtain. The good news is you do not have to know which diploma you want to choose at this present moment. And instead, you will only have to declare that at the end of your first year. The two options are Community and Justice Services or Police Foundations. So community and justice services touches more so on the restorative justice approach, how to develop community programs, work with victims and offenders, and how to prevent crime. Police foundations, on the other hand, is designed for students who want to pursue a career directly in law enforcement. Now through this stream, you will complete courses that focus on physical fitness, and that, that, that will help prepare you for the fitness examinations that will be required um, upon becoming a police officer. Now, moving forward to the next slide. Having a close-knit community at the University of Guelph Humber ensures that you will have a meaningful experience as a student with us. When you look at the Justice Studies program, typically there are about 195 first-year students within this program. This means that the average class size will be approximately 49 students. A smaller class size allows you to have a more interactive and engaging lecture where you are guaranteed to get to know your professors and peers on a more personal basis. Now, if you're asking yourself, why is it important to get to know your professors? Well, as a, um, at the University of Guelph Humber, our professors are leaders in the industry. And as a graduate of this program myself, I can tell you that your professors will be current police officers, lawyers, counselors, those who know the field inside and out. And getting to know your professors on a personal basis will make it easier for you to gain those personalized reference letters and connections in the field. Now, if your instructor, for example, knows that of a company that is hiring um, for a certain position, let's say, they may share this information with you as because, uh, or as they may feel that you are a great fit for this position. So that's just one of the, the many um, 
uh, great advantages of the smaller classroom size. Now, taking a look at the next slide, please. Now, in your first year of the Justice Studies program, you will take courses that provide you with a well-rounded understanding of our legal system as a whole. Now, presented on this slide, you'll see all the lists of all the first-year courses that you will be taking. By taking these courses in your first year, you will begin to discover your passion in the field of justice and have a better understanding of which diploma option you ultimately will want to pursue. Now, moving on to the following slide. Justice study students will complete 200 hours of workplace experience. Now, placement is built within the justice studies curriculum and is mandatory for all students to complete. This will ensure that all students have equal access to this amazing opportunity. Now, the Justice Studies uh, placement is split into two separate placement terms, one being in your second year and the other being in your third year. Now, on the next slide, as mentioned at the beginning of my presentation today, the University of Guelph Humber, more specifically our Career and Placement Services staff, have built many connections and partnerships with employers in our community. Presented on this slide, you will find a short list of some employers that we have uh, established connections with. And this by no means is an exhaustive list. It is just a short list of all, uh, of sums rather, of our placement partners. Now students can choose to complete their placements in various sectors of the law. So that includes law firms or police agencies. Now in the past, we've had students complete placements with Canada Border Services, Innocence Canada, and the Ministry of Attorney General, to name a few. Now, as mentioned, I am a proud graduate of the Justice Studies program myself. And for my placement, I was fortunate to have completed it with the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario. In my placement, I was paired with an investigator and our duties consisted of going undercover to different restaurants, bars, clubs, anywhere that served alcohol really, ensuring that that establishment was following the Liquor License Act. This was an amazing experience for me, and it allowed me to explore various areas of the law, including the enforcement side of law, but also the legal elements of a, ju of a judicial proceeding. Now, moving forward, please. So as you embark on your post-secondary journey, many of you may find it refreshing to know that, at, that we at the University of Guelph Humber are here to support you along your journey. Now we have academic advisors who are similar to your guidance counselors and they are here to support you. The Student Wellness and Accessibility Center is available for students who require accommodations and students will also have access to inclusive services such as the LGBTQ plus resource center, the international center, and the indigenous education and engagement center. And today we are also joined by Sandra Fazio, one of many career service coordinators, specifically that of the justice studies program, who will now uh, take you through the next few slides to discuss the supports that career services offers, but also what you are able to do with your degree once you graduate from the University of Guelph Humber. Sandra, oh, you're able to take it away. Thank you, Joseph. Hi, my name is Sandra Fazio and I'm a Career Services Coordinator here at the University of Guelph Humber. My, uh, my programs that I oversee are Justice Studies, Psychology and Kinesiology. But today I'm here to talk to you about uh, the Justice Study program um, and how our role is really to support students from year one right through to graduation and beyond. Uh, whether you're looking for a job, developing and networking skills, doing research, preparing for graduate school applications, or defining your career goals, again, just like the slide says, we can help you with all of that. Next slide, please. As a career coordinator, my role is really to network with employers and to explore potential career paths that come directly from the students and, and, um, and our meetings that we have together. Uh, so really it's to further education opportunities through our on and off campus events and, and um, opportunities. 
So really job fairs, career workshops, uh, we host all of these. Skill building workshops. So we, we teach you about resumes and cover letters, interview skills. We've spent the last um, year working remotely with students um, and just as effectively being able to you know, transfer the on-campus event into um, an online event. So really building around how to do online webinars and how to interview online. Some graduate school explorations and we host an annual fair where we actually bring other universities on campus. So when we're in person, uh, we host this in our atrium uh, where you can see all the different opportunities that you can have moving forward. We also do a lot. Most of my job is really designed uh, on one-on-one -on -one support and online resources. So we do have many online resources that we can offer to students. Next slide, please. This is just some sample careers. And as Joseph had pointed out earlier, these are not exhausted lists, um, but these are places where our students have gone. Um, so again, with your degree and your diploma, these are opportunities that actually, regardless of the specialization you choose, police foundations or uh, community service, really either one of these, any of these careers are possibilities with a degree in justice studies. Um, so I was making some notes earlier about, you know, just some of the other sample careers that we've been, uh, that I've been working on in my role over the past two and a half years is really, uh, we've, we do a lot currently with CSIS. We're actually working with the Canadian Security Intelligence Service. Uh, we have, uh, we've had some great opportunities with them. Uh, with the Association of Black Law Enforcers, we do a lot with that in advocacy. Polon uh, Toronto Police the Integrated Gang Prevention Task Force we've been working with. Currently, we have some great jobs right now available to our graduates that'll be graduating this year with Lob Laws, uh, with the loss prevention. They're looking for six uh, managers. They come to us because they know that our students have the skills and they have the academic rigor to be able to, uh, to go move into a uh, career seamlessly. Next slide, please. Some further education, and, and this um, I spend, again, a great amount of time talking with students about some, you know, some opportunities. Uh, our students are, are unlimited in really where they can go with their, with their education. Your undergrad is going to give you that overarching degree, and it's really going to prepare you, um, if this is your choice, to move on to you know, going into law school, we do have students that have um, that have gotten into law school all over, not only all over the GTA, but globally as well. Um, and a lot of our students do pick that kind of laneway of masters of criminology or a masters in public administration. Um, and we see this really building in those four years. We at Career and Placement Service spend a lot of time with students really creating a strong four-year plan. So coming to the university um, and having that experiential or field placement experience really builds uh, students in the direction of, of uh, further education. We do see post-secondary, um, also postgraduate certificate programs, I apologize, in insurance management. So maybe you decide, you know, over the time you've had some experiences on field placement and you've decided that, you know what, I really want to be an insurance agent. We can show you how you can do that. Take your education and get the appropriate accreditation. Addictions and mental health and, of course, immigra immigration cons uh, consultants. Next slide, please. So we do have a partnership with um, the University of London and City Law School. So this partnership uh, with City Law School uh, is a um, reciprocal relationship. We believe that their program, it's a two-year program, really fits our students from the University of Guelph Humber very nicely. Uh, it provides our students an opportunity to um, apply to go abroad and actually physically go to City Law, which is in uh, downtown London proper. I host many events throughout the academic year where I bring uh, their uh, deans uh, remotely to speak to our students. They also come out to our graduate fair. Students that um, meet the academic requirement from the University of Guelph Humber are put forward with a nomination form and actually uh, receive a 10% discount. So it's been our program heads 
uh, Gary Ellis and Glenn Hanna that really have put together some strong affiliations. Next slide, please. And then the next one is our partnership with the University of London. Um, this is uh, new to us, it's uh, about two years old. Uh, and again, this is one of um, the, our academic, uh, our program heads, Glenn Hanna has really uh, put together some great affiliations for our justice study students. Now this is 100% online masters. You don't have to go to London, England for this, even though I think upon graduation, I think uh, if I was getting a master's in law, I would want to make sure that I went to uh, England to be able to walk across the stage. Um, and this, our justice study students have an opportunity. This can take you one year. So if you're a new grad, and you decide that a master's of law is your next step, then you can take one year and really, you know, uh, go and do all of your courses that are required. Um, or it can take up to seven years. So you can, again, some of my students currently have a job within the law, uh, within the legal system in Canada, and they're doing a master's of law. I have a student right now that's actually uh, has just finished an internship with Labatt's and has decided that he's gonna go forward and do a master's of law as he continues um, his new job uh, in Labatt's Canada. So this is one of those wonderful ones where you can start at any time. Um, and again, our tuition, we get a 10% discount if you're, a, if you're a student in good standing and you meet the academic requirements from the University of Globe Humber. Next slide, please. And some really cool courses in both of those programs. Some current statistics. In 2019, um, at the University of Guelph Humber, we, we're always, uh, we work very closely in student services. So in first year, we really want students to be part of our societies and working on campus. And we wanna make sure that we create that environment for you as you move through all four years and you enjoy that university experience. Um, and then again, you know, we want to keep track. We want to find out what are our grads doing. So this was in 2019. It was a all of our graduates are surveyed, um, and 89.7% of our graduates currently were employed or pursuing further education, and 75% of our graduates considered that their career path to either be highly related or somewhat related to the skills that they acquired in their program. And I think that's a, a, a great testimony to you know, what we're doing here at the University of Guelph Humber, that the need for the degree and that rigor of academic learning and also that hands-on experiential learning is just such a wonderful mix. Next slide, please. These are just some testimonials. Maureen Elliott uh, was with us this past uh, fall. We bring uh, my role is really to really link students to industry partners and Maureen Elliott from the Distress Center of Greater Toronto came out and did a networking event with our students and it gave um, our students an opportunity not only to add to their co-curricular record, uh, which again is something that we offer here at the University of Guelph Humber, but really, really the students to be able to ask Maureen any question. Maureen is a great mentor and has taken many of our students. Next slide, please. The next one is from Cam's Kids Foundation. And again, this is an opportunity. So maybe you're thinking, mm, justice studies, I like the law. I like, you know, I'm not, but I don't want to be that. I don't want to be a police officer. Well, again, your degree is going to offer you an opportunity. It's a way of thinking. Um, and this is a great advocacy group. And this is working with young children. This is working, you know, on creating those positive attitudes. Um, and I think, you know, uh, Vanessa Morgan has been, um, it's been uh, a couple of years now we've been working with Vanessa at Cam Kids Foundation. And we do see a lot of our students actually doing volunteerism after their field placements uh, with Cam Kids. So lots of fun stuff. Next slide, please. And I think that's it for me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sandra, um, for all that wonderful information. Um, I mean, I think it's really safe to say that whether you have a career path in mind currently in grade 12 or are still navigating your career options at this point in time, um, it's definitely really safe to say that placement and experiential learning is now becoming much more imperative today um, so that by the time you graduate, 
Uh, you're doing so with experience, but most importantly, confidence um, that will help you embark and guide your career decisions and success. So as you continue to do all of that great research uh, for post-secondary and where you're going to choose to study in the fall, um, definitely make that one of your key considering factors when choosing the most suitable program, um, as you want to make sure that you're getting all the different opportunities um, after you graduate. And placement is definitely one way to do that. So thanks again, Sandra. Um, so finally, all of you might be thinking that the information that Joseph and Sandra today have delivered um, sounds amazing, sounds great. Um, but we all know it's when it goes, uh, when it comes to doing your post-secondary research, we know how important it is to try before you buy. And your research really wouldn't be complete without hearing from a current student or two for yourself about their experience and what they hope to achieve in their future. So I'm pleased today to introduce a couple of students, uh, fourth year students in the Justice Studies program. We have Gianluca Tatone and Rajinder Matharu. Um, again, fourth year students, but they actually are graduating. It's actually crazy because I get to work with them all the time and it's crazy how time flies, right? <laughs> um, so welcome to the both of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Now, uh, Gianluca and Raj, I do have a few questions for you that I'm sure our audience is so curious to know. Um, also, this is just a reminder for our guests. I've seen a lot of questions coming in, so that's really great. Um, if you have, can, uh, if you do have more questions or feedback for, uh, for us, um, please continue to submit those through the Q and A chat, as we do love to hear from you. Um, so I'm going to proceed by asking a few questions to our students, and we'll start with John Luca. So, John Luca, in our Justice Studies program. Uh, you learn about all the different areas of the justice field by completing courses such as crime and criminal justice and forensic techniques. What have been some of your favorite courses and why have they stood out to you? Yeah, that's a great question, Caitlin. And you mentioned one of my favorite courses, though, which is forensic techniques, which I'll get into in a little bit. But throughout the last four years, I've been able to get to obviously take so many different courses that have been able to challenge both my thinking and also get to reinforce where my uh, interests lie within the justice field. But two courses that really stick out to me is both the Canadian Social Problems course that I took, as well as my Forensic Techniques. So with Canadian Social Problems, I really enjoyed this course because it got to touch on real social problems that we experience in Canada, whether that's from mental health, poverty, or homelessness. And a great component of that class was we got to go downtown with our peers and our professor and get to witness these firsthand uh, social problems for ourselves, where then we got to go back to the classroom and do further uh, theoretical learning and research on the topic, which again reinforced that both theory and hands-on learning that a lot of our students get in the Justice Studies program, which leads me into my second favorite course of the many at the University of Guelph Humber in Justice Studies, which is Forensic Techniques. And in this course here, as somebody like myself that just loves everything that has to do with justice, we got to learn about fingerprints, blood splatter, how to analyze a site, a crime scene, and so much more. But for those students that don't know, Guelph Humber has a CSI lab for justice studies students specifically, where we get to go and use that lab for our learning. So the professor would set up that lab with a crime scene, and we would go in there and practice what we learned in the classroom. Again, reinforcing the theories we learned in the classroom and putting them into the hands-on experience. Thank you, John Luca. Such great examples of how uh, the university does blend that theory and practical together to kind of help guide your career trajectory. So thanks for answering that. Um, this next question is for Raj. So um, Rajinder, can you tell us uh, a bit more about any other opportunities that you've had within the program that's been outside of the classroom? So for example, I know we have a CSI team, there's Alpha Phi Sigma, other justice related societies. Can you tell us a little more about that? Of course. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, firstly, thanks, John Luca. Those are also my favorite classes. <laughs> and secondly, the um, thing about Guelph Umber is, even if you don't want to get involved, there's so much things always happening, whether it's in the North Atrium or clubs going on, that I guarantee you, you will be involved in. But Justice Studies specifically, so I am a part of Alpha Phi Sigma. So Alpha Phi Sigma is the National Criminal Justice Honor Society. And in the society, we are able to 
really get to know the justice field. And what I mean by that is associating with Innocence Canada, well-known lawyers, being able to watch presentations such as Wrongful Conviction Day. So for example, I was able to meet a person who was convicted and in prison for 11 years for, and he it was wrongfully convicted. Um, his charge was assaulting his four-year-old niece. So this man was in prison for 11 years and I was able to talk to him about his story and his experience and really build that connection. So, and that's what Justice Studies is all about. This program wants you to have those hands-on experiences to take that experience into your occupations. Another great opportunity at Guelph Humber is our pre-law society. So pre-law society is actually a mooting competition where I feel like a real lawyer and I get to present a real case to law students or lawyers. And I know John Luca actually got to go to Ottawa to present for the competition. I went to Osgood many times and we now have a GH Cup. So we host in-house competition, which actually speaking of that, this year we're hosting it in May, which I'm definitely gonna be a part of. But yeah, just these opportunities, it's great for oral advocacy, for presenting to really take it into any occupation, even if it's not in the legal field. So those are just some of the opportunities. Thanks so much, Raj. And I know we touched on placement and our courses that are super important in getting those hands-on experiences, but it's really great to hear that there's other opportunities outside of the classroom and through extracurriculars where you can put all of that on your resume. So wonderful opportunities there. Um, so next question is for John Luca. So as a student in our Justice Studies program who has completed the 200 hours of placement hours, um, where have you completed your placement and what was your experience like? Yeah, so I was very fortunate actually to complete not only my 200 hours, but to go on and do an additional third placement since I was so excited and really just wanting to go and continue pursuing what areas I was interested in within the field. So my very first placement, which we do in our winter semester in our second year, I did at Bellini McMurtry, which is a law firm in downtown Toronto. So I decided to do this because I said, well, let me see if I have a passion in, in the law field, which is great about our placements because these act as also opportunities for you to actually get experience in those fields and determine whether those fields are fit for you. So at that law firm, I was able to work alongside both legal assistants, lawyers, and so many others where I got to help prepare cases, and do some other administrative work, which also tied back to some of the courses that we have in our first year, such as Intro to Law, uh, amongst many others. My second placement was at Toronto South Detention Center. And some of you may be asking, well, what, why the big difference between corrections and uh, law firm? And that was because I wasn't 100% sure what exactly I wanted to do after I graduate this year. So I said, let me see both ends of the spectrum. So I decided to get my placement at Toronto South, where I was able to shadow correctional officers and work within the institution to both do rehabilitation and work with offenders as long as, as well as correctional officers, which again was great because I was able to bring many of the opportunities I learned in our corrections course from uh, one of the courses in the four years that you'll take and also bring back those experiences into the classroom. And then lastly, I was able to do um, my placement, my third placement at Toronto Police with their Integrated Gang Prevention Task Force that Sandra Fazio was touching upon earlier. And this was a great opportunity because I was leaning towards maybe a possible career in policing, but wasn't 100% sure. But I also knew that there was more to do with policing than just simply law enforcement. And this is where the Integrated Gang Prevention Task Force came into play because we were not on the front lines. We were working with community members. We were doing 31 town halls in Toronto's low equitable neighborhoods, working on gang strategies and research on how to provide resources for those impacted directly as well as working alongside front, frontline officers where I was still able to ask those questions about policing and still get that frontline experience. So that's just a quick highlight of my placement experience. Um, but needless to say, placement has been super valuable to me because it's been able to reaffirm where my interests lie upon graduation. Thank you so much, John Luca, for that, that wonderful description. And I think a lot of our audience loves the fact that, you know, you get to try out a bunch of different things, not just, you know, learn about it in the classroom, but you actually get to, again, experience, take it for a test drive. And that way you're going with confidence after you graduate to know what fits you best. Amazing. Um, so my next question here is for Raj. 
Um, so uh, I think a lot of our guests here in the audience might be wondering the same thing. So um, when you were considering university programs, much again, like our audience members here, um, what made you decide on our justice studies program? What attracted you most to justice? Um, thank you, Caitlin. Firstly, I think it was just if you're anything like me, I want to help people. And that's kind of my goal into whatever career I want to go to. So if you're joining in this webinar, you probably kind of same thing. You want to go into the community, you want to help people. And when I was in high school, I'm thinking, okay, I'm doing really well in law. I think I want to help people. What, what program is that? What can I go to or gear towards that will bring out that part of me? And I can finally, you know, find a career out of. And then I saw justice studies. And even looking at the occupations here, it's not just police officer, it's not just lawyer, you can be youth workers, you can be probation officers. Again, like John Luca mentioned, really policing is also working in the communities, there's different types of officers, and it all has to do with helping people. So when looking at these occupations and when looking at the courses as well in justice studies, as mentioned previously, I realized, yeah, this is definitely what I want to do. This is definitely a place for me where I'll feel like I'm comfortable enough and it'll help me, you know, bring out more characteristics, like I said, like public speaking, oral advocacy, and to be able to help people. So that's why I chose Justice Studies. Amazing. Thank you so much, Raj. I'm sure a lot of our audience members can resonate um, that when it comes to choosing a program, it's definitely important to look at your values and how you'd like to satisfy that. So thank you so much for pointing that out, because that's also a very important thing to consider when it comes to choosing a program. So our next question is for Gianluca. Can you share with us any opportunities that have enhanced your experience at the university, specifically extracurriculars, for instance, work study, um, clubs, study abroad, that sort of thing? Absolutely. So like Raj touched upon earlier with some of the great clubs and societies, there's so many great opportunities available to all GH students, but specifically just to study students as well. So some that really stuck out to me was my opportunity to not only take part with alongside Regender in Alpha Phi Sigma, but also to take part in the Pre-Law Society, as well as be a work study student. And that's one thing that I think is great for all students and that they should really strive towards is if you're working for the university, you're able to do this in between your classes and you're able to do so in many different roles that might cater to you, whether that's through a learning support peer role, which I've been able to take part in, or a student transition and resource team leader, which work with uh, orientation and students coming from high school transitioning into the university life. There's so many different work study options for students at the university that'll really enhance your opportunities while you're here over the last, your next four years. But one that truly stuck out to me was my opportunity to do a study abroad. And a study abroad is an opportunity for all Guelph Humber students, not just just to study students, that they can go abroad for a uh, 10 to 12 days and it acts as an elective and they can study of any area of interest that is available for them to study at a country that is available. So I was able to do it in my second year going into my third and I was able to go to Italy for 12 days where I was able to study a course called Food for Thought, where we were able to talk about food insecurity. Now, this was important because we started our learning here in Toronto in the university where we learned about food insecurity in Canada, how it impacts people on a day to day, as well as looking at it both in indigenous communities and beyond, but then also going to Italy and exploring how in Europe, for example, I didn't know this until I took the course, but Italy amongst other European countries have many other policies that help reduce food waste, unlike some, some countries here in North America, which was interesting to learn and get to really get those firsthand experiences abroad and bring those opportunities back. And as a student that also loved to travel, this was a great opportunity for me to meet new friends as well as get that abroad experience. Thank you, John Luca. I'm sure a lot of our students are interested in learning more about study abroad and uh, the day that we can eventually travel, I'm sure those opportunities will become available and Work study. I know I've worked with Regender and John Luca personally, and I do have to say it's a great way to make connections and meet new people. So, uh, lots of great experiences. So, a couple more questions. Uh, next one is for Raj. Um, after graduating from the University of Guelph Humber, um, which again is coming up soon, what are your plans? Thank you, Caitlin. I actually love this question because. I feel like sometimes it's like a parent asking, hey, uh, when you grow up, what do you want to be? 
And my question is still always jumbled, but that's the great thing about this program. It gives you so many different opportunities. And um, personally, I'm, well, I work three jobs in security right now. So you can tell I'm more in the law enforcement side. <laughs> I definitely wanna be a police officer, um, hopefully one day into the vice unit. However, I'm currently working on getting my law degree. So I'm practicing for the LSAT. You always wanna have education under your belt, you know, to make changes in the world. And I think you should never stop learning. So definitely want my law degree, but I wanna be a police officer one day. And yeah, but for future down the road, I think that there's endless opportunities, like I said, with this degree, and there's always continuous learning. So keep anything under your belt, just keep getting more degrees, either more diplomas or keep learning. And um, yeah, hopefully one day we can all achieve great careers in the legal field if that's our you know, options. I'm positive you both will. And um, I do understand with Gianluca, um, you will have plans of pursuing a master's degree. Is that correct? Yes, that is. And that was uh, attainable not only through, you know, the connections such as Sandra and some of my other peers on, you know, reassuring what my interests lie, as well as all the focused programs and classes we had within the program that led me towards that choice. But it also had a lot to do with uh, the close knit community that we have both at the university, but within the program as well. And also being able to speak to some of my professors. So Joseph had touched upon this earlier where a lot of our professors work in the field. And that is so true. I've been able to take courses both in policing, law, corrections, and they've all worked in those fields, whether that's as a lawyer, as a police officer, as a corrections officer, and being able to talk to them and get their personal experiences and anecdotes has also helped guide me towards my goal to pursue my master's in September. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for providing that insight. Now we do have one final question that I th that is gonna be actually for both of you. Um, that I'm sure our audience members would appreciate. So um, I just want you both to take a moment and reflect back to when you were in the shoes of our grade 12 audience and having to make this very big, important decision of your life. Um, so what advice can you give to our grade 12 students as they make their decision on which university they should attend? Let's start with Raj. Um, personally, I think you should choose a university where you feel comfortable. You should choose a university where you're able to take risks. And for me, Guelph Humber was the university. You know, I came out as a very shy little girl from high school and this university was able to bring out a part of me where I wasn't afraid to ask questions. I wasn't afraid to raise my hand. And that's what you wanna, that's where you wanna be. You wanna be comfortable in your own space to take those risks. And I think that's really important to consider. Plus, um, like for example, I've lost my Humber number probably a hundred times. And I go back to the same guy and I'm like, hey, I'm so sorry, I've lost my Humber number again. And he's like, it's okay, Raj, don't worry, I got you. So you also wanna make connections here and be, it's like a family almost, right? You're welcomed here. And that's kind of the feeling I get. And I want everyone to experience that feeling. So the best advice I could give is find where you're comfortable and you're able to make and take those risks. Thank you. Thank you. And Gianluca, any advice you'd like to share? That's a great question, Caitlin. And I think for me right now, it's kind of resonating like it might be for many students watching tonight because they have to either pick between universities or they might not be entirely sure what they want to do for next year. And I, I can resonate with all of you firsthand because now I'm in the similar boat where I'm choosing what I'm going to go or where I'm going to go, sorry, in September for my master's. And the first piece of advice I'd probably give my grade 12 self, remembering how anxious I was about this whole process is first and foremost, just take a second and breathe. 99% of the time, everything is just gonna work out perfectly fine. And for me, that was here at the University of Guelph Humber. And I would encourage you to continue to be informed. So whether that's through attending webinars such as tonight, which all of you have obviously taken a first step at, get informed of other universities that might be of interest to you. An, an analogy that I remember one student told me when I visited the University of Guelph Humber is you wouldn't purchase a car without test driving it first. And that is the exact same with universities. You wouldn't attend a university that you didn't get any information on or didn't visit. And it was webinars and events such as this that I attended as a grade 12 student, which was that test drive for me, which when I walked into the University of Guelph Humber said, okay, this is where I wanna go. 
So I encourage my grade 12 self to continue to work hard. I know there's still a little bit uh, of time left in the school year. Continue to work hard, continue to keep your marks up because if many of you are not aware, we have really great entrance scholarships and I encourage you to keep working hard and keep staying informed. And I'm sure many of you will end up where you wanna be. Absolutely, such words of encouragement. Um, thank you so much, Raj and John Luca, for all of your stories, perspective, your advice. Um, I'm sure that uh, that's been incredibly helpful for our grade 12 audience and aiding these students on their journey to finding their best fit. So um, thank you so much for all of that information, um, which now also leads us to another important perspective. So it's not just about the information that's presented today, but that's also about experiencing our campus for yourself as John Luca and Raj has identified. Now, while we know that we can't necessarily replace the actual campus experience and we would love nothing more than to invite you to our beautiful, lovely facility and building um, that I like to call home as well. Um, we do have one of our lovely student ambassadors who is also in the Justice Studies program, uh, Cindy Solano, here to guide you through a virtual campus experience over the next 10 minutes. It's probably the quickest tour we'll ever deliver. Um, but just before we begin, um, just please note immediately following the tour, we will finish off with a live Q&A to address all of your remaining questions live. Um, I know that we are um, maybe going to go a little bit over time, so if you can stick around, that would be great. But for now, we'll move on to the tour. So welcome, Cindy. Hi, thank you for that lovely introduction, Caitlin, and thank you to all the presenters. I myself as a fourth year justice study student have even learned a thing or two during this amazing webinar. So thank you so much for that. Anyways, hello everyone and welcome on to the University of Guelph Humber campus. I'm really excited to be here with all of you today and to take you up the front steps and inside the University of Guelph Humber and to show you all around. So grab your things and let's go. Follow me around our four story building chock full of student support and state of the art facilities. Let's start where students gather every day in our famous North Atrium. The North Atrium is essentially the hub of student life. It looks up to our signature spiral staircase, one of five staircases and two elevators that accesses our upper floors. It hosts a virtual Currents events board and is a meeting point that literally breathes life into our campus with its four story plant wall made up of over a thousand species of plants. It's one of the first of its kind in Canada, and its biofilter cleans the air in the building and offers the perfect backdrop for a selfie. And I've taken many of these here during my four years so far. As we move around the atrium, we pass by our main entrance, info desk, and many student service offices here to support you in your admission and advising on for work placements and career planning, academics, and student financial services. Students connect with student services to speak to our very helpful staff one-on-one -on -one to ensure that they are always making the most of their time here at the university. I'm personally so grateful for the many times that academic and career advisors have gone out of their way to help me out with things such as course selection and questions about our placements. Going back to our atrium, business students can be found here making events come to life in our art gallery, where in the events management two course, student groups are given a budget of $1,500 to source, plan, and execute a live event. A live event, okay. <laughs> Events of all kinds have been held here, from art exhibitions to product launches. I recall attending a couple events here in the art gallery between classes, um, which I recall being some of some really amazing experiences where I get to interact with other students of various programs and even get to sneak in a snack here or there. Across the atrium from the art gallery, we find GH111 and GH117, which are two 120 seat lecture halls, which is essentially the largest you could find at the university. With an average class size of only 49 students, most of our classrooms seat 65 students or less. However, larger first year courses are held here, equipped with natural lighting, swivel chairs and outlets at each seat, and still allow the opportunity to work in small groups. One thing I like to share with um, prospective students is the fact that the classroom that you're looking at right now is essentially the largest that you will ever be in at the university. I had one class in my third year, which was an elective called Global, Global Citizenship, and I absolutely love that class for many reasons. But one of the main reasons was just the fact that there was only nine students in that class. So I got to know my professor really well. I got to know the students in the class very well, develop friendships with them, and my prof was even able to write me a reference letter a couple of times. 
As we head back to this spiral staircase and up to the second floor, let's check out our newly renovated practice presentation rooms. Built with the help of alumni donors, these rooms act as a practice boardroom for student project groups to enhance their public speaking, power presentation, meeting, and case delivery skills. The sound dampening design allows for quiet in the room when, when campus is busy. Our new case competition course allows business students to learn how to tackle business cases and the opportunity to take part in one of our award winning case competition teams, some of which who have actually taken home some major hardware at competitions all across the globe, such as our very big win last year in Johannesburg, South Africa. My former classmate named Emma worked extremely hard to prepare for these competitions while she was on this team. And she often credits these experiences and getting her an amazing job as a, as a senior reconciliation officer at Scotiabank. As we work our way, our way around the second floor, we find various student spaces for individual study and study groups, as well as our learning commons, where many student workers help classmates with computer, academic, career, and research support. And they get paid and build resume experience while doing so. I personally love going here just because between classes, when I see a familiar face, I just love to say, hey, or if I have any questions, for example, about any tech issues or any questions about my resume or cover letter, um, if I'm applying for a position, I just love to go here and ask for advice and they're very helpful with this. Just around the corner, the Ignite Leadership Lounge is located across from our GH Cafe Eatery and gives a space for student leaders to assemble, plan and execute student initiatives, events and pursue common interests. Many future students, and leaders such as yourself find themselves in meetings in this very space, whether your interest is leading a club, an academic society, or getting involved in student politics. Now it's time to head up to the third floor where we'll take a sneak peek into our several applied learning labs. The early childhood study program boasts two amazing facilities on this floor. The Innovative Learning Lab, which is a state-of-the-art classroom that teaches future educators to understand learning styles by using them themselves. Learning pods are equipped with smart boards and a variety of seating styles, including wiggle stools, beanbag chairs, and bicycle desks for the active kinesthetic learner. The Early Childhood Resource Room is a social hub for ECS students and where students can sign out hundreds of learning resources to bring to work placements in schools, therapeutic settings such as the Ronald McDonald House and Sick Kids Hospital, among many other options in order to learn techniques and enrich their own lesson plans. Next, we'll move into the crime scene investigation lab. And I just wanna give you a heads up, should you feel uncomfortable with viewing a crime scene up close, please minimize your Zoom window at this time. I'll give you a couple moments just to do that. So this is actually one of my favorite rooms and all the university as a justice study student myself, I'm a little bit biased, but the CSI lab is set up by professors, professors to emulate the various components of a recent crime scene. In this room, students will assess finger fingerprints and blood splatter, which is just one of the many ways that our justice study students apply their classroom learning outside of the classroom. Students can join and compete in international competitions with our CSI case team or get involved and prepare for law school or other graduate studies with our pre-law society Alpha Phi Sigma Honor Society, which I know we spoke a little bit about before. So we're going to head down the hall where you'll find a series of labs dedicated to our media and communication studies students. Our editing suite features 27 inch iMac workstations equipped with industry leading design software, such as the Adobe Creative Cloud, and here for, which is also here for digital journalism and visual communication students to produce and edit their work. Our control room allows for students to learn how to create the lighting and sound behind the magic of television. Now let's take a quick peek into our photography lab where digital marketing and social media, visual communication and multimedia journalism students shoot and edit their work. Our multi-purpose production studio hosts a sound stage, a green screen and allows students to produce live television broadcasts and podcasts on location. For those of you who follow us on social media at Guelph Humber, you might even recognize some of these facilities as we put them for use on our web series called What's Up Wednesdays. And you might even recognize Caitlin who um, helps out with these amazing um, images online. Okay, so lastly, and, and uh, new, which is actually a new thing that we have, and I strongly encourage you to you guys to attend this room if you get the chance. It's our virtual reality lab, which is which is equipped with 360 Google cameras, and it's actually allowed us to create much of this tour that you are currently watching. 
I remember there was one time I was in this room and I actually watched a prospective student um, put on the glasses and it looked like she was falling off a cliff. And it was, it sounds horrible to say, but it was really funny to watch. And it just, it's an amazing thing if you ever get the chance to go here. Down the hall and around the corner, we're gonna head to the Experiential Learning Lab now, which is used by our family and community social service students. And it is basically a simulated model of a typical community agency office, which offers two counseling rooms and a one-way mirror, which allows students to role play their client interviews and mock counseling sessions. I know personally, I got the chance to use this um, room as a justice studies student um, for a counseling course that I took in my second year. And I remember my friends and I went in this room and we kind of did like a mock um, counseling session. And it was really cool because it made you feel as if you were in the workforce yourself. And in the same space that you're looking at right now, our psychology students get to use this lab to conduct their own research. So students have the opportunity to be hired as a research assistant where they work a paid position along a professor to collect and interpret data on a specific topic of, of their interest. I know a former tour leader such as myself, her name was Skylar, and she was hired as a psychology research assistant uh, last year. And the topic that she studied helped her to write her thesis and gave her the opportunity to present her findings at an academic conference last winter. I even have a very good friend of mine who got the opportunity to go to California as a research assistant. And she tells me that not only was it one of her best experiences as a student at the university, but just in life, is she just so grateful for that opportunity that she had to travel before the pandemic hit. So as we head back down to the second floor, we strongly invite you to get to know our full Humber College campus by visiting their North Campus virtual tour, which can be found online at humber.ca. Humber buildings house many of our shared student services, such as library, which such as the library housed in the Learning Resource Commons, the bookstore, the Student Wellness and Accessibility Center, our math and writing centers, international and testing centers, as well as additional eateries. Honestly, there are so many options for food, at for food at Humber, whether you're a burrito lover such as myself, if jerk chicken is your jam, or if you like to keep it light and healthy with veggie bowls, salad bars, or the odd burger or two, we have many options available for you. Two days a week, there is even a pay what you can soup bar that caters to students using all sustainable cooking methods. Last but not least, found at Humber and frequently by our students are the athletic facilities, study spaces, and our unique kines kinesiology labs. The exercise prescription lab is where students take courses and partake in related hands-on learning, such as taping, and they get to use body assessment equipment, such as bod pods. This essentially allows students to understand body composition in the context of health. From here, we'll head back across the bridge and through our main doors for a quick walk across the parking lot to residents. This is where, where the University of Guelph Humber shares three buildings for living, learning communities with Humber College students. For students who want to live on campus, single style rooms are assigned to applicants who receive an offer of admission and apply to residents by June the 1st. I've heard many amazing things about living on residence. Um, of course, there's the idea of being surrounded by friends who might even become your best friends and it could be a friendship that lasts your entire life. So if you have the opportunity to live in residence, it could be an amazing experience for you. On top of that, there's even the perk of being situated on the Humber Arboretum, which is a hundred, which is a 250 acre green space set just behind campus and filled with award winning garden spaces, hiking trails and even an outdoor classroom. I don't believe we can see the image here on the screen, but I assure you it is a beautiful scene. So if you ever get the chance to check it out, I would strongly encourage you to do so. I know myself if I ever had the chance between classes, me and my friends would go to this um, beautiful green area, or even some classes I had. I know I took an Indigenous elective um, in my second year, and I was able to actually go here for a couple of class sessions, and it was an amazing, beautiful experience. I'm really, yeah, you can see the picture there. It's really beautiful. <laughs> okay, so now that you've had a glimpse across the University of Guelph Harbor building and the surrounding area, I really hope you have a good feel of what it's like to benefit from the many state-of-the-art facilities that we pack into one friendly building and the high level of support and many opportunities that come along with being a University of Guelph Humber student. Thank you so much for joining me on our guided tour. Um, and now I'm gonna turn it back to Caitlin who is gonna share a couple important reminders. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much, Cindy, for that lovely virtual experience tour. Um, like I mentioned, we can't wait for the day that we can welcome our student staff um, and prospective applicants back on campus. Um, but hopefully that gave you a little semblance of what life is like at the University of Guelph Humber. 
Um, so now we're going to turn it over to your questions. So again, um, we do appreciate um, all of you for staying a little bit later. Um, we do have a lot of questions to get through and we're very excited to tend to those. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask that um, all of my staff and students, um, so Joseph, Sandra, uh, Rajinder, and John Luca, if you can turn your cameras and mics on, um, so that we can attend to the lovely questions that have come through from our guests. All right, so the first question will be for Joseph. And I know this question we've been getting quite frequently because I know we're all eager to back, get back on campus. Um, so this question is, are classes going to be in person or online in September? Um, is the expectation that in class versus virtual we be begin in September? So Joseph, can you tend, uh, tackle, uh, tackle that question, please? Yeah, for sure. Um, that is a question that we're getting quite often. And to be quite frank, I wish I had a crystal ball to see what the future of the pandemic holds. Um, I wouldn't have believed that we would be in a third lockdown, but yet here we are. Um, as it stands currently, we are planning for more activity on campus for fall 2021 semester. As such, we are planning to have as much face-to-face -face learning as possible. However, recognizing, of course, that our ability to provide face-to-face -face learning uh, truly does depend on public health guidelines. So we are also planning for the possibility of a mix of face-to-face -face learning with remote learning as well. Uh, we will continue to keep uh, students, our current students, as well as prospective students and applicants um, up to date as soon as we um, make a decision on what the fall semester will look like. So I promise, stay tuned. Uh, we will send communication through email, but as, as of right now, we're planning for as much face-to-face -face as possible um, and as much as uh, public health guidelines will allow. Thank you very much, Joseph. And uh, I believe this next question is for you as well. Um, so we have a question that says, what makes Guelph Humber Justice Studies different from other university programs? Are you able to um, shed some light here, Joseph? For sure. So unfortunately, I can't speak to other post-secondary institutions as um, I don't have any insight on what their programs are like, so I obviously do encourage students to always um, seek out further information and investigate what other universities have to offer. But we could definitely speak to the University of Guelph Humber, and I think uh, I, today we did a very good job outlining who we are as an institution and what we really do have to offer our students, and that essentially is more in your four years. So you will be receiving a degree and a diploma in four years, and we were the first institution in Ontario to provide that. We are the only still to provide it concurrently within your four years at one location, being the University of Guelph Humber. So the fact that you're able to get the theoretical knowledge uh, paired with the practical hands-on learning all in within one setting in your four years truly does and is what makes us at the University of Guelph Humber very unique. And we also have a placement experience for all of our students, specifically the Justice Studies program, that's 200 hours of in-field experience, where you'll be able to gain valuable connections within your field, uh, meet potential employers, gain reference letters. Uh, Raj mentioned it earlier today that, you know, many of her professors have provided reference letters, and I know Gianluca as well, he's uh, built many connections uh, within various organizations, which I'm sure will be an asset uh, as they, the two of them go on to further um, their education or, or get into their careers. Now, uh, we are also a smaller campus. So being, you know, having a student population of just under 5,000 ensures that your class size is uh, on average 49 students, maximum 125 students, what that allows is for you to build those connections with your instructor, with your instructors and peers. Um, you know, it is true that at the University of Guelph Humber, you will get to know your professors and your professors will get to know you. Um, so that is also what makes us unique um, and stand out from larger institutions is the ability to uh, connect with your professors who on top of that are industry professionals. So being a student in the Justice Studies my, my program myself uh, or a grad, 
a graduate rather, I can assure you that your professors will be police officers, lawyers, counselors. They will be professionals who are working in the field that have the connections, but also the experience to pair with that theory. So I hope that answers uh, that question in depth, but I'll pass it back to you, Katie. Thank you so much, Joseph, for that, that thorough uh, explanation. I hope that clears that up. Um, we do have several more questions to get through. So again, reiterating, thank you so much for sticking with us. Um, I'm gonna direct this next question to Sandra. Um, we have a question here regarding how does the co-op portion of this program work, co-op meaning placement? Um, field placement in the justice study program, I have to say, is the most uh, wonderful program because we begin to connect with you in first year. So our field placement coordinators and myself, the career coordinator, we come out to your classrooms uh, and we begin to set you up for success. So we start that in community service one, and then we move into uh, your first placement would be in the winter of your second year. Um, or you can choose to do it in the summer. There are summer options as well. So, uh, and we really work very closely with the student to uh, guide your greatest area of interest. I remember John Luca when you came into the office and wanted to work in corrections and it was like one of those, okay, I got the person for you. Um, so, you know, it's all about networking and we really show you how to do that very well. Yes, indeed. I know even when I was a student, I know I was in injustice studies, but placement was one of my favorite experiences. And I know that career and placement does a really good job at assisting students and supporting them. Um, this next question, Sandra, is for you again. Um, and this is re re um, regarding placements and jobs. So how did your placements at the University of Guelph Humber help secure jobs after graduation, if you want to briefly um, highlight some information there. A hundred percent. I mean, um, I think back, we have several students that um, go into field placement and secure themselves positions outside of field placement. So, and again, part of my role is really helping them um, put together very strong resumes. So, you know, there's parts of the resume where we put on your field placement experience, and then we've got to section it out to then be your work experience. So there are those opportunities. It is not a for sure, like anything else, um, but it definitely can occur. So yes, definitely. Awesome. And uh, just to further that, Sandra, we do have another question here. Um, how can students make connections during uh, placements? in the justice studies program. I'm assuming um, making connections to find placement or even within placement, if you have any tips there. So each program at the University of Guelph Humber has dedicated staff so again, I am the uh, career services coordinator. So I help you in understanding the job search process. For the justice study program, again, you have so much, um, you have so much, there's so much opportunity to really take it in the direction that you wanna go. So I show you how to search for volunteer opportunities, search for paid opportunities. And then I show you how to put together a cover letter and resume that's gonna specifically help you to secure yourself a placement. So we do that. Then there's also the staff member in our department that's the field placement coordinator. And that field placement coordinator really works one-on-one -on -one with students. And they, um, their role is to really get all of the documentation that is required from the university perspective to make sure that you're having, that your experience with in-field placement is being documented uh, correctly with all the right insurance policies and all the right affiliation agreements. So we have staff that are dedicated to that. Um, we spend all of our time really supporting students and understanding that you're coming into university with the ideology that on the, on the way out that you're going to have a viable career. And we do, we have so many resources to really support you in understanding the four-year plan um, and really getting, taking those small steps to build your career throughout. And as you can see with both Rajinder and with John Luca, they both are testament to, you know, taking advantage of every opportunity that's, that's been put forward. Absolutely. And um, again, just another question that kind of snowballs into that, Sandra. Um, in terms of placements, are these placements, um, do, are students able to choose their placements or are they assigned by the professors or staff at the university? 
so again, as a field placement coordinator and as a career coordinator, we are always connecting with industry partners. So we, you know, go out, we say we've got these amazing students and this is our field placement and this is when, you know, it occurs. So we actually post, we have a career portal called GH Works and we post career and placement opportunities uh, on GH Works. We also encourage students to, you know, if something is not on GH Works that's really hitting your fancy, you really want a law office and it has to be in, you know, in Barrie, Ontario, then we'll work with you to find the appropriate place and really help you find the mentor uh, that will be able to support you. Thank you, Sandra. Um, my next couple of questions that I'm going to direct are to our students. Um, and then we'll circle back to some more career and placement questions. So um, my question to both of you in rapid fire, um, what do students enjoy most about the University of Guelph Humber and or Justice Studies? So uh, perhaps we'll have Gianluca begin. Yeah, that's a great question. And for me, just to keep it concise, I really love the opportunities that were available to me, whether that be uh, societies, whether that be work study opportunities and placements in the justice studies program. But I think the number one thing that really still stands out to me as a fourth year student is really being able to just go up to my professor and asking questions that are on the top of my head and being able to get an answer. So whether that be, you know, class related or being um, industry related, whether that was a, a police related question that I wanted to ask my professor that worked in the field saying, hey, like, this is what I want to do now moving forward. What are some of your recommendations? These are some of the things that are really unique to Justice Studies and the University of Guelph Humber that students might not be able to get at other institutions, which is something that over the last four years has proven to be super valuable for myself. Thank you. And Rajinder? Um, absolutely. I think Joseph and John Luca have like hit it head on when Joseph mentioned that all of our professors are in the field. So you're talking to police officers, lawyers, you're talking to probation officers, so they know exactly what you want to do and exactly what to expect. So having those answers right in front of you and basically having that life experience explained to you um, and making those connections, like even professors can try to get you into the field, right? So definitely having that knit on connection with your professors. Thank you, Rajinder. Um, again, another question for our students. Um, so this is quite a cool question. So what is a typical day for a University of Guelph Humber Justice Studies student. Um, I'm sure that looks different both in on campus and virtually. So I'll have John Luca begin with this one. That's another really great question. So very similar to high school, once you have all your courses uh, selected, you're of course gonna have a schedule. So whether you have, for example, a intro to law, which will be one of your first courses you'll have in your first semester. If you have that on Mondays at 8 a.m. until 10.40, at that given time, assuming, for example, pre-pandemic, you were in person, you would attend that classroom, you would attend the class and meet the professor, you'd get a course outline, which would go over all the course expectations for that given course, times five for the courses that you'd have for that semester. And similar to high school, you'd be having quizzes or assignments or tests, which would all be outlined and explained by the professor. Now to kind of give a little bit of an inside look of what it's been like to be a virtual university student, that has been something that has been very consistent as well. So instead of me attending my classroom in person, I've joined a Zoom or a Microsoft Teams classroom during that same window of time during the week. And the courses have been able to continue uh, similar to in-person, whether that's through the professor giving a live presentation, doing group work in breakout rooms, as well as uh, still submitting assignments and doing presentations such as a webinar or um, virtual presentations. So similar to in-person, we've been able to continue the same type of standards and learning opportunities as we did in person. Thank you. And Regender, please. Um, for me, it's very similar. Um, the only difference is sometimes, well, we have a lot of athletic facilities. We even have Soka with Shakira. You can do yoga classes, dance, anything like that, where we actually go to Humber for, and Guelph Humber students can use any facility in Humber as well. So I would usually, after class, go either work out, go dance, go do something, and then come back to class. Um, or if you work, again, work study, as John Luca mentioned, we're both start leaders. So we would either go to our shift and then go back to class. That's kind of a day in, you know, Guelph Humber campus. 
Um, but virtually, yeah, virtually it's the same thing, kind of Zoom, Microsoft Teams. We still get to do, we still have a lot of opportunities for like debating, um, for even like lectures. Our professors will try to make it as fun as possible. So I promise you it's still interactive. Amazing. Thank you very much for your insight there. Um, I'd like to turn over this next question to Sandra um, regarding city law. So how does the city law school program work? Um, how does the two-year program for city law work with the four-year program at the University of Guelph Humber specifically? Sure. So our affiliation with city law school is uh, an amicable one. So we say that, you know, our students are the right fit for their law program. So you as a four year student, you know, as a completing your undergrad, you have to bring the grade point average. So that's kind of on you. Then you go on to the city law website, you apply to city law, and you actually get um, accepted. Um, and it is a two year graduate program or an LLB program. So you would then uh, talk to city law, you would make all the arrangements with city law. And then you come back and you say, yay, Sandra, by the way, I got in. And then we pass you on to our academic advising by completing a nomination form. So when it comes to we nominate you that you're a student in good standing, you meet the academic requirement, and then that um, document gets sent directly from our institution to city law, and then you get the 10% discount. So that's really our relationship. We just, our program heads have gone and really evaluated the program and say that it's a nice fit for our students. So our students, and again, you can check out city law, that it is part of the NCA accreditation process if you do want to come back to Canada. I hope that Thank answers. You. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. That was really informative. Thank you so much, Sandra, for, for that explanation. Um, I'm going to direct this question again to you, Sandra, regarding masters. So after graduating from the Justice Studies program at the University of Guelph Humber, is it a good idea to get a master's in criminology? Is a master's worth it? I, I saw that question. And you know what? That's really what I do all day long. I started at, at nine o'clock this morning with that very question. So I think that's a great one. Um, I think, you know, again, the journey is very individual. We have students that come into the justice study program. Um, and, you know, when you start to begin to, to really choose your specialization, police foundations, community service, um, students get really confused. And uh, I always say to students when they start to meet with me, that's really good. We've done our job right. If you're feeling confused, because we've offered you so many different things to be able to consider. So it does become, to answer your question, it's very individual. Um, and again, I always say to students, you don't have to stay in your lane. You don't have to do justice studies law. And I think Rajinder pointed that out. You don't have to stay, you know, justice studies criminology. You can, um, and it is a viable option, and we have lots of students that go in that direction. Um, and again, is it is it needed? Um, it depends on what your career aspirations are, right? Really depends on where you want to take that. And the fun part is, is you can take that right up to a PhD if that's what you want to do. So many opportunities, and that's that's really great um, to have so many options because, again, very individualistic. Thank you, Sandra. We have two more questions left. Um, I'm going to direct these to um, Joseph. Um, so thanks again, everybody, for sticking around. Um, so this next question is, what advantages will a degree and a diploma bring? That is a great question. And as previously stated at the beginning of my presentation, um, again, Statistics Canada released that 14% of college graduates had previously um, attained their undergraduate degree. And the reason why these students were going back to the college was to gain hands-on experiences. So that way they can prove to their employers that they not only have the knowledge of the industry, but are able to uh, complete the duties of the job. And therefore, the University of Guelph Humber provides you the degree, which gives you the theoretical knowledge, in this case, of the legal system as a whole, and a choice of a diploma in either community and justice services, where you'll learn how to actually execute restorative justice approaches, 
or police foundations where you'll learn the ins and outs of law enforcement. Now, having both of those credentials, again, it tells employers that you have that knowledge, but also know how to apply the knowledge in a real world setting. Um, employers are looking for individuals who um, are not just textbook savvy. Um, you know, a lot of students and graduates from universities, they graduate and they don't know how to apply the theory they learned in the class. They can tell you all about it. But when you ask them, okay, so how does this theory that you're telling me about actually pan out and play out in the real world, they kind of get lost. And so the beauty of the University of Guelph Humber is we strongly believe in teaching you the theory because the theory is incredibly important. But then we believe in showing you and teaching you and allowing you to practice how that theory truly pans out. Uh, so um, the stats speak for itself. I mean, students are recognizing that, you know, it's great that they have their degree, they need to get their diploma and they go back to get their diploma to obtain those hands-on experiences. And for you, if you would choose to attend the University of Guelph Humber, you're gonna save time and you're gonna save money. What, you'll be, what you should be uh, obtaining in six years, four-year degree, two-year diploma, you're getting in four years all at once. Um, so that is really and truly why I chose the University of Guelph Humber was because of the degree and diploma. So hopefully that answers that question, Katie. Yes, thank you so much for that, that in-depth um, description of, of the benefit of having both. And I think this next and final question, um, I believe we actually answered it um, individually, but Joseph, maybe can you can just tell us a little bit um, very briefly, what hands-on experience outside of placement will justice studies uh, have for our students? Yeah, for sure. So um, I believe Gianluca and both Rajinder touched on this, but as a student within the Justice Studies program, you will get to use the crime scene investigation room that is for your forensic techniques and investigative technique courses. Uh, you will have a, a class that you'll actually learn how and learn and practice how to make an arrest. So you'll literally arrest one of your classmates. Um, and, and, and to be honest, that was one of the best experiences uh, for me in the program. I didn't ever think that I'd be arresting someone in a university setting, um, which was awesome. But you'll also practice counseling techniques. So you'll, you'll run simulated experiences. Uh, Raj mentioned it before. Uh, we, you know, your instructors in your law related courses are going to teach you um, how to execute those theories. So you'll actually go ahead and have a, a moot court that you'll participate in in class. Um, I remember for one of my classes as well, um, there was a, an instance where we got to class and our instructor told everyone, all right, exit the classroom. And they, they were going to set up a simulated environment um, where we learned uh, various different theories and how those actually played out in a real setting, which was really unique um, and a great experience there. So there are a variety of hands-on learning experiences within the program. And what the beauty of it is, um, every single course that you're going to take, they're going to pair the theory with practice somehow, with the practical elements somehow. Uh, so there's a variety of different ways. I can't list them on the top of my head, all of them, because there's just so many. Um, but I believe our, our, our student panel today alluded to a lot of those experiences um, uh, for you. So I do encourage you, if you want to learn more, uh, you can always book an appointment and we're willing to discuss um, uh, and clarify some more of your questions there. Thank you very much, Joseph, for, for sending us off on that, uh, all those amazing hands-on opportunities in the program. Um, makes me very interested too. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just want to say that this concludes today's webinar. Thank you so much for sticking around and for all of your great questions. I wanna thank again, Joseph, Sandra, uh, John Luca, Regender, and Cindy for all of the information that they delivered today. We hope you found the information and storage shared very helpful as you continue your university research.
But the conversation doesn't end here. Um, we would like to continue helping you uh, throughout your journey however we can. So we do invite you to check out our resources in the chat. Um, we've also included uh, their other ways to connect with us uh, throughout the application process. So that includes our other virtual offerings. Um, so we do have other uh, GH Talk series um, that are coming up, other programs and other topics of interest coming down the pipe. So we encourage you to check out our website for all of those webinars. Um, and then I also want to invite all of you to Next Steps, which is happening on May 26th. And these are basically um, sessions that um, provide your next steps to becoming a U of GH student. So um, for more information and to register, uh, please use the visit us link in the chat. Um, one thing, or by checking your email, one thing to point out is next steps registration is not available just yet, but it will come down. Um, it will be available in the coming weeks. If you do have any further questions for us, um, we do encourage you to check out our website, wealthhumber.ca slash future students for more information. Um, please contact us uh, by phone, email, or uh, we highly encourage you to book a one on one virtual appointment with us using the link in the chat so that if you have any specific questions, we can uh, address those um, individually. And lastly, we encourage you to follow us on all of our social channels for the latest and greatest U of GH news and updates. So I'd like to thank you all again for joining us this evening and for your interest in the University of Guelph Humber. We hope to connect with you again very soon. Have a great evening.